Hi Aries, welcome to your December 2021 reading. Can we admit now that 2021 was probably harder, if not as hard as 2020? I would say it was harder anyway. <clears throat> Just a thought that I was having like 2020 got the wheels turning for things to change and then this was the year that things needed to change. So I guess that's pretty on time. For you guys, you'll have the Sun, Mars, Mercury, and the New Moon Solar Eclipse all in your house of expansion and learning new things and traveling abroad and your belief system and um, all of those things that are kind of like a core to your moral values. There's going to be this big spotlight on them. And that's how it is every year for you at this time of year. Um, you, you know, if you feel like this is sort of that time of year where you do start thinking about like, wow, I really feel like I need to level up or wow, I've really been feeling kind of stagnant. Or if you've just recently shifted your life around, um, it's because you're recognizing that your energy is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's outgrowing spaces. You're literally outgrowing spaces because your energy is so big. So, um, yeah, really allowing yourself. I think it's really about an allowance. It's about creating that momentum for ourselves. I think that that's what December is going to mean a lot for you. The new moon in Sagittarius, the eclipse that's happening is the end of the Gemini Sagittarius axis that we've had like six eclipses on. And it's you know, removing ourselves from the past and how we were brought up and that belief system and creating our own. Um, but really also having to bring, think about other people and be aware that there are other people in this world and create space for them as well. But this month is about focusing on the space that you need to create for yourself and the boundaries that you need to have as well because there will be people will be projecting this month unfortunately that's what we're looking for that's what we're looking at the 19th of December uh, Venus goes retrograde in Capricorn and really <clears throat> you may really see people perceiving you in different ways and projecting onto you and you may feel like you need to reassess your career choice or um, the thing that creates responsibility and accountability for you, whatever that is for you, that's going to be kind of spotlighted. And with a Venus retro, with any retrograde, we're reassessing, we're, we're reviewing, you know, we're having to look at those things and this one's about self-worth. Venus in Capricorn uh, is very practical. Venus in Capricorn really likes somebody that puts effort in to things. And with it retrograde, you know, Venus just isn't about money and possessions and beauty and love. Venus is also about our own self-worth, how we see ourselves. And when Venus is going to be in such a public house for you, um, not really feeling it very, you know, she doesn't really feel great here. Uh, you're going to have to change the narrative, I think. I think for you guys changing that, re like totally reprogramming your mind from how people have treated you. And allowing yourself to say, wow, it's time for me to step out fully in what I need to do for myself. Jupiter is going to be uh, moving into Pisces on the 28th for the second time this year. Uh, Jupiter was in Pisces in May to July earlier this year. And he will be there until the mid he'll be in there a lot of 2022 for a few months. He'll move back into Aries. Um, or move into Aries, not back into Aries, but he'll move into Aries for a while. Um, so 
you know, we'll talk about that a little bit further in another video. But um, this being in your 12th house, this is where you're going to have to give yourself grace and you're going to have to be kind to yourself and you're going to have to understand that because um, I'm a 12th houser, like I live, <laughs> I have so many energies in my 12th house. Um, I understand that 12th house energy so much. Uh, I wish I didn't, but it can be very mentally detrimental to you. And having Jupiter there uh, is just going to expand upon that. So really um, practicing your spiritual strength. If it's not spiritual, it's self-awareness, right? Like if you're not religious, if you're not spiritual, it doesn't matter. Being self-aware, being aware of yourself, being aware of how you're speaking to yourself, being aware of how you're presenting yourself, that's all going to be something to look at. So sorry if my <laughs> technology is weird uh, right now. It's just I've had such a difficulty with technology in the last couple months. Hopefully the new year brings some relief to that. I don't know what it is. Like I've had to get different cameras and I've had to get like all sorts of things. And it's just still is kind of jaggedy and lagging. So hopefully. Looking at the cards. Okay. Yeah, this is not going to be an easy month to get through for you guys, but um, whatever it is that is creating this big shit, whatever shift, whatever it is, <laughs> this whole sh I wanted to say a shit storm too at the same time. Um, you have to be willing to release the things and let them go because you cannot control how other people are going to approach you. You can't control how other people, you can't make other people act the way you want them to act or be with you if you want them to be with you, you can only control yourself. So we have the Four of Pentacles was the first card that came out. We have the Tower. And we have the Three of Swords. Uh, bottom of the deck, or bottom of the deck. The bottom line is the Knight of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, it's really shiny, and the Six of Wands. Okay. The shift is going to bring great rewards. And I think that you're sitting here, I know I'm, I'm reading the bottom row first, but I have to. Um, the Wheel of Fortune and the Six of Wands, the shift that you're currently going through is going to bring some rewards to you. Uh, the Knight of Wands, there's something, there's an answer. There's some, you, you're, you're looking for an answer to what happened here. You're looking for some closure. You're looking for some kind of reprieve, rest. Four of Pentacles, the Tower, and the Three of Swords. Whatever it was that that Tower is releasing you from, please let it go. That Four of Pentacles, if you're trying to hold on to something that was that painful for you, you're only contributing to your own suffering. When you see the things being removed from your life and you really have no control over it, when things happen to us and we don't have control over it and other people decide they want to take control over our own life and our emotions, the best thing that you can do is to allow yourself to understand that this is the universe making room. Because I feel like with the Six of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune, you're creating the shift. You might not have created the tower, but you are creating the shift. And I think that 
that speaks so much louder than the people or the things that hurt you, to be quite honest. Um, and man, I know, I know for you guys, it's really about, um, being the warrior, standing up for yourself, getting it accomplished, right? Um, I've learned so much this year about how things can happen in our lives to dramatically change and shift them without any kind of warning, without any kind of, yeah, just nothing coming at you that it's going to be like that. And it's so interesting how we are tasked with understanding those things, even though they're not something that feels like it's benefiting us at that moment and in that time. Um, I even said to myself yesterday, I think it was like the audacity for me to even think that I know half of what the universe wants for me and the audacity for me to stop that birthright from happening, despite everything else that has happened in my life. There are moments when it's not even about being the warrior. It's just about showing up for yourself. You know? And what's interesting is I'm in my seventh house perfection year, which is my Aries, Mars year. Um, so this reading kind of, it, it hit a little bit close to home for me too. I don't have any Aries in my chart, but I understand what you're going through. And I understand the process and the pain and you know, even if this isn't something that has physically or ha it hasn't happened to you recently in your in your space, in your energy, it is something that impacted you so much that you've been carrying it for a really long time. And I think now your energy is ready to let it go and to release it. So I'm really excited to see what happens in your extended. We're going to clarify all of this. Look at the bottom of the deck and chat a little bit more. You can get that by checking out the description box, going to Vimeo, getting the video there, or becoming a member of the channel. All of that information is below. Um, I also have, and I keep forgetting to tell people this, <laughs> I have um, a sale on almost every one of my readings on my website. The only ones that are not 50% off are the one question readings and the Venus and Capricorn reading. Um, if you want to know how Venus is going to impact you directly, I have a reading for that. Um, it's not 50% off, but it is reasonable, <laughs> reasonably priced. So, but everything else is 50% off. So if you haven't gotten a reading with me, now is probably the time to do that. I'm not sure how much I'll be offering that next year, um, because things are shifting. So that is my end of the year present to everybody. Use the code HOLIDAY22. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the extended. Have a wonderful holiday season. Bye.